we were introducing just vaguely, and then I got off on some wild tirade <clears throat> about even if you're messed up and don't believe, the Lord can still get through your walls and he can also get through your, your knucklehead. Um, so we were talking about altars, and, and, um, and I think since I only really read, I think, two sentences, I think I'll reread those and then go from here. As an, um, as an altar, the altar of incense, primarily, its primary purpose was steel sacrifice. Altars are God's way. Uh, they are the foundation of how he thinks and operates and the primary basis upon which he wants to relate to us. <clears throat> All right. So we looked at uh, scripture in Luke, and uh, we saw that Jesus said, he started with saying, look, I'm going to suffer a lot of things, and, and not only that, but I'm going to be rejected, and not only that, but I'm going to be slain, and not only that, but this life, this self-giving life, God bless you. Um, I don't know that stuff. Um, <laughs> Clearly, uh, this selfless life that suffers when, when it's God but doesn't have to, and this, this selfless life that is God but can take rejection without just mass destroying the whole world because he has the power. And thank God we don't. Because if we did, I would not want to be your enemy. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, and so he's, he says that, and then he said, you know, if any man come after me, let him also, let him deny himself and, and take up the cross. And, and, um, and then he, he says, you know, that trying to save your life doesn't work. Because I'm into altars. <laughs> and you're doing the exact opposite of altars. So that if you alter, you save your life, right? You, you see what I'm saying? If you, if you seek to not alter, be an altar, have an altar, then you lose your life. I thought I was going to lose my life if I went with an altar. Yeah, but this one, remember what we talked about last class, this one shows his hands and everything, and he says, I'm the crucified. What we're supposed to see from that is he yet lives, that, there, that it's the only death that life comes out of, so that if we seek to save our life, we lose it, and there's no life out of it. These altars are important. Now, if you don't believe that, read John 20, verse 19 through 28. Anyway, all right. So I want to give you a, a, a few more scriptures. 2 Corinthians 4.10. <clears throat> and... Uh, in the last one, in Luke 9, we, we saw that he said, take up the cross daily. And so we're seeing the perpetual sacrifice, whether it be the altar of incense or the brazen altar. Here in 2 Corinthians 4, in verse, starting with verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so how often do you do that when a crisis happens? No. When you, you know, no, no, no. Because then it's not a perpetual sacrifice. It's not a perpetual altar, see? So, so how do we, you say, well, how do I just constantly do that? It's by Christ in you. It's by the lamb is that altar. He's the self-giving one, see? And he's the true one that gives himself. And we're only bearing about in our body the dying, I-N-G, ongoing, perpetual. Um, and when, when the Spirit of God enlightens this Old Testament tabernacle and the Old Testament temple with what Jesus said and what Paul said, we began to see the fulfillment of what God always wanted. 
In Hebrews, he said, well, if, if the people in the Old Testament didn't do what God said, and da, 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 but this happened, how much greater da, 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 will we receive? Well, you know, it, while it is true, remember that Jesus still does come through walls. And remember that when he showed up for Thomas, he said the same thing he said to the other disciples, peace be unto you. And he said, okay, let's do this. Whatever you need to, that will bring you into the reality of Christ crucified, I am here for you to help you come to that. But only by my, my life that is self-giving unto death, meaning Christ crucified showing up. Then came Jesus. And everything changed. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Well, see, all this stuff that I'm reading doesn't sound so tasty unless you see that, that it constantly brings forth his life as the way, the truth, and the life. It brings forth life. Bearing his death is not the end goal. We do it so that his life may come forth. And in fact, these scriptures will say that, uh, yeah, the rest of the verse and then on. For Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And so then death worketh in us, but life in you. And so the goal is life. Death worketh in us. Um, well, first he said um, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal body. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. And the goal is always life. But you have to remember now, the life is the self-giving one, okay? But, he's, but it's perpetual. It's a perpetual altar. It's a perpetual sacrifice. He is. He is. All right. So still in 2 Corinthians, a few chapters over, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 10, Paul speaking here. As unknown and yet well-known, as dying, D-I-N-G, as dying, ongoing, perpetual, as dying, and behold, we live. Do you see that? How do you still live? How come we can't destroy you? I mean, they crucified Jesus, and yet he lives. And they, they you know, Rome doesn't exist anymore. But Jesus does. And, and all that has been thrown at Jesus, and here's why. Here's why. Because he's God and bless God, his son and his message, nobody's going to take down. Oh, come on. Get off of it, you earthly thinker. It still goes on because whether by life or by death, he is going to be manifested. He's going to be glorified. It doesn't matter to him. It doesn't. You set him on a throne and he goes, I'm a slain lamb. You hang him on an altar and he says, you know, I'm the lamb of God. But there's no length of bad that you can throw at him that life, this life, the only life that, that will proceed from that death will come forth and will not end will not end, will not end, because it's a perpetual sacrifice unto the Father. See, it won't end. It can't end. It can temporarily look like it's over with, but even in that, that's, that's his life. That's his self-giving. And that's why he says, I mean, you know, you and me, if our... If our disciples or the people that are close to us all, when we got in trouble, they all ran away and they all went and hid, we'd be so mad at them. we go, you know, I mean, kind of, kind of like Paul with Mark, John Mark. You know, 
He's like, you know, let him go. But then later on he understood, not that Mark was beneficial to him for the ministry, though that's what he said. He understood, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. The, why? If we're humans, you don't do that. You don't say peace be unto you. You react and you hold a grudge and you da 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 da. But if it's Christ, he's okay with that because he will go into self giving and the end result is going to be that they're going to be with him anyway. You know? And even with Judas, I mean, he didn't say, well, you dirty rat, you scumbag, you scum-sucking pig, you are going to burn in hell forever, but okay, let him take me. He didn't go into any of that. Of course, you probably wouldn't either, but in Oak Cliff, that's what you, but anyway. <coughs> uh, <coughs> that's how you talk. Um, so, there's, there's clearly a cloud over Jesus instead of the cloud being over the disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration in our minds. There's a cloud over being able to see through to the way his life really is without applying what's expected of his life because it's not expected, it's, it's for sure because it's his nature we call it what's expected of his life, is, would be expected of mine, and I can't do it, and I don't even want to do it, or whatever. Well, you know, you big wah wah, you're, you're wrestling with, your, you're boxing the air. Isn't that what Paul said? You know, I fight the, I don't fight the air. I don't, you know, um, you're wrestling with unno, uh, unreal demons. You're fighting with unsubstantiated truths because they don't apply to you in that way. You are blocking the, the Spirit of God, maybe even in some cases quenching the Spirit of God, because, because you, you, you don't see through. Okay, so with Thomas... The only way he saw through there in John 20 from the last class was when the, Christ, when the crucified showed up and said, I'm telling you, I, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that bad in the sense of to give myself to that degree to be able to save the whole world, not that bad. But we don't see the altar in our life as bringing forth anything except for the enemy winning. Say, well, Satan won. Can you see Jesus, you know? <laughs> Satan won. I'm resurrected, but it ain't too much. You know, Rome won. The relig Jewish religious leaders won. Religion won. You know? And yet, that same thing happens in our mind. It's, it's a cloud over the true Jesus. See? And there was, and they were led by that cloud throughout the wilderness. They never saw into the cloud. They never saw behind the veil. They never saw the reality that fulfilled it all. Take, take that temple, take this tabernacle and spread it all out and lay it all out and then walk into the Holy of Holies, point at him and say, you're here, give me the book of Hebrews. And he'll walk through the veil and he'll walk through the altars and he'll walk through the pieces and the courts and the, and the laver and all of this stuff and it'll be the book of Hebrews. Well, or the priest or whatever and Jesus fulfilled every bit of that. See, take a quick walk through Hebrews. That way, that, that way. Because you can stand there and stare at this stuff and hear spiritual truths and it just doesn't resonate or something. Well, I don't get it. I don't see the importance of it. Okay, but then came Jesus. 
And then you go, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you fall to your knees and you say, my Lord and my God. Okay, so what's the goal? To see the truth at the tabernacle? To listen to me or anybody else? To, to beat yourself because you don't see it yet? You know, you're just wasting your time beating yourself or, you know, whatever else it is because your focus is still on you. It's still about you. Oh, I've got to get this. Hey, I'm going to try this. I, yeah, whatever, whatever it is that will help me get this, I'm going to get it. Or you can say, i got one task. Holy Spirit, you're going to have to reveal Christ. And, you know, and then when that happens, you'll go, you know, they'll say, what happened? What did you do? What things did you do? What order did you do them in? What, what order did Randy teach that gave life to you? And you'd say, here's my answer. Then came Jesus. That's my answer. When he did, the issues were over. The issues were over. All right. Guess I'm not going to get off of that last class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So uh, um, uh, as we're still in 2 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. As unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Okay, so how about this is your lot in life? Unknown, dying, chastened, sorrowful, poor, having nothing. Are you okay with that? Okay. And when you put it in that context, no. But in the context of how every ounce of me decreasing, Christ comes forth, and now you're known by Christ. But you still don't get the credit. <laughs> but you're known by Christ. And and um, as dying and behold, we live. And yet what people see is you're dying, but you're alive unto God through Jesus Christ. And that the death is even being with him in the fellowship of his sufferings and being with him, being made conformable to his death. It's not conformed to death and suffering, but that's what we see. He's in a cloud, and we're the ones that don't have the cloud over us, and we can't see past the, the veil. We don't see in there. All right. Um, I'm not going to go on with that there. Philippians 4.4, 4, and I, you don't have to turn there for this, but you can mark it down. It just says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And I want to add that to 1 Corinthians 15.31. Um I protest by your rejoicings, which I have in, in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Uh, there is this thing of the rejoicing, uh, especially in Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, that relates, I believe, to the altar of incense. Now, uh, I just noticed that we only have maybe a minute left or something, but it relates to the altar of incense. It relates to, um, uh, well, let's just say this. If you really care at all about this subject and you want to follow something up, you know, homework, uh, it would be looking in Isaiah 6 and you see there that he saw the Lord and da 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 da, but it was, it was right there with the altar of incense. The coal that was taken was taken off of, and, it, and even if it was, but it was taken off of the altar of incense and his problem was his mouth because before that he was saying, woe unto everybody, woe unto you, woe unto this, woe unto this. And when the coal got put on his mouth, he says, woe unto me. Okay. And I believe that the altar of incense not only refines our prayers, and refine is not a good word, but, you know, refines our prayers, but it refines our tongue. And there are tons of scriptures they talk about rejoicing, but it's not just sitting around being happy always. It's a perpetual joy over Christ crucified 
that you have because you have the highest kind of fellowship there is. You say, well, where do you get that from? Well, you get that from, and I don't have that in my notes and just came to me, but Romans uh, 12.1. Present yourselves. Oh, my God. You know, we're already a few seconds over anyway or minutes over. Um, Romans 12.1. You see, the, the glory of 20 minutes is you still get 45 minutes. Not really. Um, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Okay, the, the word reasonable service is actually, if you look it up, it is the highest form of spiritual service. And this is talking about also the altar of incense because, and it's, well, I think it's both because the coals are the same and the fire is the same. It just depends on the specifics of this thing. But it's, it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice acceptable to the Lord, holy to the Lord, a high form of, of uh, of spiritual worship that you may prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is an incense. It is a rising of something to the Lord. So we go, we look at us presenting our bodies in circumstances or something. I'll volunteer for that or I'll do, you see what I'm saying? That's where our mind is still here, it's still us. We, we, we focus on that. But when we're doing it by Christ, there is an incense, there's a beauty, there's an acceptableness unto the Lord. It's the tabernacle, it's the temple. We're the temple of God. And the fulfillment of these things are going up. Now, here's the deal. If you don't get it, if you don't get it, or you don't believe it, just keep your little mind in John 20. <laughs> Scott reminded me during the, the break, you know, they were sitting there and the Lord came through the walls and he said, peace. And then he showed him, I'm Christ crucified. And he revealed himself as Christ crucified and, and all this stuff. And John's writing in 1 John, that which was from the beginning we've seen, we have handed over the, oh my God. It is, the, it is the embrace, the eternal embrace. Hallelujah. And it's not embracing truths, it's embracing him. Him, that, that. Say, like, what are you talking about? Everything you say is gibberish or weird. Or I'm talking about that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Father, be blessed. Be blessed as we... Our hearts draw together and draw towards you. Be blessed that we're wanting to break with our thoughts of taking scriptures and then only applying them to us, like presenting our body a living sacrifice, only holding to what we're doing instead of what you're doing through us and the sweet savor of that that rises to you in the midst of it and becomes holy and acceptable to you. It becomes the highest form of spiritual sacrifice because it's selfless in its nature, because it's Christ crucified in us, Father. And Lord, um, your spirit stands ready, just like you, Jesus, walking through the, the locked doors, and just like um, um, uh, the disciples, as well as Thomas, hearing your heart, peace be unto you, you stand ready, and the Spirit of God has been sent to declare these things, to declare the fulfillment, to declare us as temple and tabernacle, to, to, to declare that we are your body, we are your temple, through whom these things now are supposed to be living, a new and living way, not the old covenant way. And we ask you to continue to stir us up and to and to uh, uh, thrill our hearts and to break our hearts, both. Lord, don't, both. Just have your way, have your way, have your way. Don't let up. Keep coming through our walls. 
keep coming through our walls. And we're in agreement and we want you. And Lord, and we just, just make it plain. Not, not what Randy's saying even, but what your spirit is seeking to convey through the word of God and through the heart of Jesus to us. Hallelujah. Bring us to the Father by the Son and let life spill over. Lord, let us let us let our cup run over. We're tired of having a little bit in the bottom and being proud of it. Father, fill us up with your fullness. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. So so we're with you. We're with you. You said peace be unto us. We're with you. We're not with the program. We're not with the, the teaching. We're not with the this and that. We're with you. And you're going to use all of that, yes, but we're with you. So hallelujah. Be glorified. Smell the fragrance of Christ, even if it be ever so small coming out of us, even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.